A couple months ago, my sister spilled coffee all over this 2017 MacBook Pro. Immediately, it began to have issues, from spazzing to freezing to randomly shutting down. In an attempt to save her one and only computer, she called up the Apple Store looking for their help, and they turned her down. Water damage on Apple products is a mortal sin. Apple will not live up to their warranty if they sense that even the littlest bit of water has been inside of the device. They go as far as having one-time water sensing strips that change colors to let the Apple technicians know if water has been inside. At this point, my sister was out of options. Her one and only computer was getting worse and worse every time she turned it on, and the only people that could help her denied her outright. She, like many other Mac and iPhone users, had to do the one thing Apple wanted, buy a new laptop. A tale as old as time, why fix it if you can just buy a new one? And that is how I got my hands on a 2017 MacBook Pro. As you may have noticed in the intro, this MacBook seems to be working just fine. Well, besides the extremely annoying fan rattle, as well as the sticky keyboard, but those aren't anything close to freezing or extreme file system corruption that my sister was experiencing. No, it seems like what this MacBook needed wasn't for an Apple technician to replace the entire mainboard. Instead, it just needed to dry out for a really long time. My best guess is that when coffee was spilled on it, it made its way deep into the device and caused a short that when the system was turned on, it would cause you know errors and crashing, but it wasn't on some critical path to destruction, so once it was able to dry out, it's back to working normal. Essentially, this whole problem could have been solved with the one simple question. Did you try putting it in rice? So now that we know the MacBook works, let's discuss the things that don't work great. Externally, we have a very obnoxious rattling fan and a sticky keyboard. Internally, we have an Intel Core i5-7360U. Yes, that is a dual-core processor and it's 7th gen. We also have 8GB of RAM and a 128GB SSD, so not the greatest specs in the modern era. But luckily, we can fix some of these almost issues. For the rattling fan, for a whopping $10, we could buy a brand new one and put it in ourselves. For the sticky keyboard, if we didn't spill coffee on it, then Apple would be forced to replace it because of a major class action lawsuit. But since we did spill coffee on it, Apple knows that and would deny that request. So we're just gonna be doing our best to clean out the keyboard, blow underneath it, and get those switches working again. As for the internal specs, Without some extreme skills with the soldering iron, as well as some specialized professional tools, we're sadly not going to be able to upgrade the CPU and the RAM, though no, it is possible. However, we can upgrade the storage. We're going to be using a cheap adapter from Amazon, which will allow us to go from a measly 128 gigabytes to a whopping 1 terabyte, all for about 70 bucks. And one more thing before we dive in and take this laptop apart, make sure to prepare a USB boot drive with Mac OS. You're gonna need to be able to install the operating system from somewhere. I'm gonna be leaving a link below with a more detailed plan of how to do this. So with all that, let's get to the upgrades. Luckily, getting into this MacBook is actually pretty easy. If you have something like an iFixit kit or another device repair kit, most likely you're gonna have the right tools for the screws that you need here. The bottom pops off with only a few screws, then you wedge a wedge around it to unleash all the clips, and then you give it a firm tug to remove it. Looking at the internal layout, it's pretty straightforward. At the bottom here, we have the battery. On the left-hand side, we have the fan and the cooling solution. In the middle is the CPU and RAM, and then over here on the right is where we have our upgradable storage. And if we take a closer look for damage while we're inside, we don't see many remnants of that coffee spill. We can see some stains around the edges and on certain internal pieces, but after scanning the whole board, I don't see any melted devices or corroded connections. So my best guess is this MacBook is gonna have a long future ahead of it. And now for our two upgrades, the SSD and the fan. We'll have to start with the fan since it'll require taking out the entire motherboard. A new fan is going to be absolutely critical here for actually using the laptop. The last one clicking all the time drove me insane. And thanks to Apple for making us remove the entire motherboard to replace this fan. I'm going to be skipping over some of those steps, but I will leave another link that will have an in-depth tutorial of how to do this if you're following along. 
and with the new fan installed and the board back in, we can move on to the storage. For this upgrade, we need to use an adapter from M.2 to Apple's proprietary connector. Luckily, these can be found for pretty cheap on Amazon, I think I paid around 10 bucks for mine. This is the part that I'm most excited about, because 128 gigs of storage is not nearly enough in 2023. Especially when you consider the overhead from the file system, you're looking at way less than 100 gigs of usable space. After the upgrade, we're only looking at around 900 gigabytes of usable space. So with the laptop book back together, we can install macOS Ventura using the USB boot drive that we created earlier. This is going to be using macOS's disk utility in order to properly format the drive as well as transfer the files from the USB drive. Once inside, simply select your USB drive, follow through the prompts, and you're off to the races. Now that we have macOS Ventura installed onto our new boot drive, we're pretty much ready to go. Honestly, Apple has always done a great job with their product design. Even though this laptop is from 2017, it looks and feels amazing. Externally, it's ultra slim, it's built of high quality materials, and its screen is absolutely beautiful. Internally, the dual core 7th gen i5 performs surprisingly well. The 8GB of RAM hasn't really given me any issues so far, and now that we actually have a usable amount of space with 1TB, this system is pretty good. If you're not doing any professional work or any intense applications. Like I said before, the specs of this laptop aren't the greatest in 2023. Comparing the Geekbench scores of this laptop versus newer MacBooks, we can see that the numbers are not so great. With a single core score of only 1141 and a multi-core score of 2389, these older specs won't get you too far. The question now becomes, is upgrading an old MacBook even worth it? Look, I've always been a Windows guy, so I've had a bias against Apple and macOS all my life. I've never truly used a Mac for an extended period of time, until a couple weeks ago when I started using this one. I can honestly say now that I really enjoy Macs. I'm not pushing it to the limits as some would, but for things like web browsing, watching YouTube videos and movies, and writing notes and scripts for this video right here, it does a pretty good job. I've also done some software development work on this laptop, and even used it to produce some amateur uh, music uh, recently. All this has brought me to the conclusion that upgrading an old MacBook Pro can be worth it. If you have a budget closer to say $1,000, then go for something new or at least something newer. But if you're on a real tight budget, say only a couple hundred bucks, and you need a laptop for something like school or your work that's entirely online, or you just want a simple laptop, then an older MacBook Pro may just be the way to go. I hope you enjoyed my experience with an old MacBook Pro and upgrading it. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up as well as hitting that subscribe button. I do have a lot more good content coming your way. Once again, thanks for watching. I'm Spectral Tech, and I'll see you next time.